some people are so far in a hole that they're, they're so out of focus they can't see straight. I was completely hopeless and truly I uh, didn't really care about living. There are a lot of people that come through here that, you know, you, you wonder, what is a person like that even doing here? They just don't seem to belong here. They really don't have anywhere else to go, so it's nice to be in a place that's so welcoming to anyone from all walks of life. I think they are good people, and they are taking care of um, every person who is in need. Hope. There's hope. If you want it, there's hope. Human life is sacred in all its forms, in all its stages, and in every condition. We came to Toronto in 1963 at the invitation of the Archbishop, um, really to replace the work that the Sisters of St. Joseph were doing in this area and the Archdiocese wanted us to respond to the growing need of homeless people uh, with food and shelter. People that come here first and foremost are offered dignity and respect. If they're here for a meal, they're welcome to come and join us, have as many meals as they need. The staples in life, you get up in the morning, what do you have? Eggs and coffee. Eggs and coffee we have to buy. That's expensive. We just set out uh, stuff that's donated to us, and it can be anything, whatever happens to be donated. We just set it out in trays, make it presentable. We keep coffee and uh, coffee mugs, which is getting a little low here. Let me just replace that. 8.45, they open those doors, and anybody who wants to can come in and help themselves. I cater for about 800 to 850 people on a daily basis. Who are uh, in dire need of socks, of shoes, of underwear, long johns in the winter, sweatshirts, hoodies, t-shirts, jackets. You know, a lot of these guys work, some of them are on the street, uh, some of them need to have clothes so they can go out and get a job, a lot of them have lost their clothes or had them stolen in these various places they stay at. You expect if, if a place that, uh, you know, that has uh, used clothing, that there would be a pile here and a pile here, and you know, you, you, people come in and say, well, maybe I'll find something that, that fits me. But every, it was like a store. It, everything was all sized. We have a lot of people who not only have a dealing with addiction because of drug and alcohol, but they also have a medical condition. Some of them have HIV, some of them are hepatitis, other of them have other medical conditions, cancer and so on and so forth. So we have a nurse on staff who deals with those issues. We have St. Elizabeth Nursing who comes in in the evenings to help us with some of our evening clients. Um, we have a few doctors that come in for our shared care program, which is a CAMH program that is provided here as well for our mental health issues. We offer them the basic needs, housing, clothing, food. After we meet those basic needs, we say, what else do you need in order to live with dignity and with a sense of well-being? I was brought to the DARE program about three months ago due to my alcohol and drug addiction. Our D.A.R.E. program is for people who are homeless because of addiction. We help them look at that addiction, find recovery, find peace, and put their life back together again. I've been struggling with uh, drug and alcohol addiction for the past several years, and uh, when I had bottomed out, I had gone to detox, and they had recommended I come here. And at first I was struggling within myself where I was going to go and thought I could wing it myself, and I couldn't. I entered the D.A.R.E. program in the, in the Good Shepherd and uh, I've been here for the past uh, three months. I've gone through treatment. I'm in the post-treatment uh, phase right now and you know f for all intents and purposes I can say that this uh, the pro being in the program here has saved my life literally. I've been here about um, eight months and um, I was able to get a chance to uh, put together a, a treatment plan for myself and uh, take the necessary steps that I needed for my own individual circumstances so that I could um, get the best help possible um, with the support of the Good Shepherd. I'm getting help to find housing, I'm getting help in aftercare here um, among the uh, the fathers and the brothers and uh, the staff here. Those are key, key points to, to why I chose this place because it's a safe place. I'm learning to become a person again, you know. Uh, 
uh, to be out there was felt pretty, uh, I guess you could say, marginalized, and things are starting to. My self confidence is coming back. You know, I'm confident that uh, that I'm going to do well when I leave here. Last year, I'm delighted to say we rehoused 240 people who came through the resettlement program, through the refugee program and through the D.A.R.E. program. That's what really motivates me, having the clients moving from that stage of their life and being able to move on with their life to do something positive. I've managed to get a, a work permit, yeah, and I hope to get a SIN number very soon. In the early 80s, for example, the presenting crisis at that time was people living and dying with AIDS. The Little Brothers of the Good Shepherd dedicated to working with peoples on the margins were just quietly establishing a beautiful home right behind us here on Tracy Street to welcome and to take care of people living and dying with AIDS. We responded to that crisis at the time by operating Barrett House. It is their beauty that becomes part of our journey and part of our story. Life is short and precious. Elderly people were staying in our dormitory with nowhere else for them to go. Um, so we created St. Joseph's Residence. Uh, St. Joseph's Residence was started seven years ago. I'll show you an example of one of the rooms. This is Patrick's room. He's 78 years old. Here's our main living room, dining room. The men sit here for meals. We need to expand. It has been hugely successful. Uh, the guys are maintain, a f for the first time, a stability. To me, it's like a second home. I've been in boarding houses, rooming houses, they were no good. When I came here, it straightened me out right out. Every time I open the door, every time I talk to one of our employees, every time I talk to a human being, I am talking to the image of the Almighty. Volunteers come in seven days a week. They do everything from making beds to handing out food. I think that there's good in everyone and coming into the Good Shepherd, um, the people here and the staff, the volunteers and the brothers really help you to find that goodness. The volunteers play a big role here at Good Shepherd Centre. It's, without them, there's absolutely no way we'd be able to do this ministry. It really, it's a selfishly motivated thing. It makes me feel good. The love we share to the clients, the hospitality, the service. We, we do a great job here at Good Shepherd. God has sent us an angel and you are our angels because you help people change their life. Good Shepherd is impressive. It's a, it's a well-run operation and deserves support. Everything is needed in this house. We provide all services free of charge without question. I think it's done, it's a real unconditional kind of love here that, uh, that I've never really experienced anywhere else. We're in desperate need, I would say. Every time a client walks out that door and says thank you, I feel like it should be the other way around and that I should be saying thank you for the things that they've taught me. So you're basically saving people's lives. After I lost my wife, she has been very, very good to me. Straight me right out. I get a little choked up thinking about it. I, I've received a lot of help here. I don't know if I could ever repay what I've received. And, um, I'm, uh, just really, really get thankful and grateful for, for everything. Everybody can contribute. Everybody can give a helping hand. Homelessness is not my problem. It's not the government's problem. It's not the church's problem. It's our problem. And we can only make a change when we work together to create change.